patient named K Narsimha Rao age 58 presented with chief complaints of shortness of breath for 15 days chest pain for 15 days coming to history of presenting illness patient was apparently normal 15 days ago then he started complaining shortness of breath which is insidious in onset rapidly progressing during the last 5 days he complained that initially breathlessness occurred during walking up hill now he complains that even during daily activities like walking on level ground and also he complained shortness of breath is aggravated on exertion but relieved on taking rest there is no history of midnight awakening due to shortness of breath coming to complaint of chest pain since 15 days which is insidious in onset and non progressive chest pain is left sided tabbing type of pain which is radiating to the back it is aggravated on exertion relieved on taking 10 to 15 minutes of rest there is no history of palpitations pedal edema abdominal distension or facial puffiness during the last 15 days patient had two to three episodes of blackouts which starts as spinning of head and then 5 minutes later he had the episode of blackout there is no history of cold no history of cough and no history of fever and there is no history of hemoptysis jaundice or loss of appetite coming to past history there is no similar history of shortness of breath in the past he is a known case of hypertension for 15 years and is on regular medications coming to personal history he takes mixed diet he is non smoker non alcoholic family history there are no similar complaints in the family treatment history patient uses telmisartan with amlodipine since 15 years now coming to the summary of this patient here we have a 58 year old male known case of hypertension with no other comorbidities presented to us with exertional dyspnea of nyha class 2 progress to class 3 associated with chest pain and also 2 to 3 episodes of blackouts my differential diagnosis taken from the history could be ischemic heart disease or valvular heart disease most probably aortic stenosis coming to general examination of this patient patient is moderately built and nourished he is conscious coherent and oriented to time place and person there are no signs of clubbing cyanosis there are no signs of pallor there are no signs of icterus there are no signs of lymphadenopathy there are no external markers of infective endocarditis such as splinter hemorrhages mucosal petechiae and osseous nodes and there are no external markers of rheumatic fever such as erythema marginatum subcutaneous nodules or sydenham scoria coming to the vitals of this patient pulse rate is 94 beats per minute but it is regular with low volume and slow impulse there is no vessel wall thickening there is no radio radial delay or radio femoral delay all peripheral pulses are felt in this patient coming to respiratory rate of this patient it is 18 cycles per minute thoraco abdominal type the blood pressure of this patient is 100 by 70 mm hd and temperature is 98 degrees fahrenheit coming to systemic examination we start with cardiovascular system on inspection the size and shape of the chest appears to be normal there are no chest wall abnormalities trachea appears to be in midline there are no precordial pulse and apical impulse is not visible in this patient there are no visible scars or pulsation or dilated veins in this patient coming to palpation of this patient all the inspector findings are confirmed the shape of the chest appears to be barrel moving on to apical impulse we feel for the apical impulse with the base of our hand on the fifth intercostal space once the apical impulse is felt we have to locate the impulse with the tip of the finger and in this patient we can feel the apical impulse in the fifth ics 1 cm medial to the mid clavicular line the next palpatory finding is parasternal heave we look for the parasternal heave with the heel of our hand on the parasternal region there is no parasternal heave felt in this patient 
moving on to percussion and cardiovascular system we look for right heart border left heart border and any signs of pulmonary artery hypertension as we examine the right heart border we have to start in the second ics which corresponds to the sternal angle we have to start percussing downward until the liver dullness is felt once the liver dullness is felt we have to move laterally and start percussing medially to look for the right heart border in this case the right heart border corresponds to the right sternal border to examine the left heart border we have to start percussion at the fifth ics where the apical impulse is felt and start percussing medially in this case the left heart border corresponds to apical impulse and there is no lateral movement of the heart border which indicates there is no pericardial effusion next we'll examine if there is any signs of pulmonary artery hypertension by percussing in the left second ics normally in this area there is a resonant note but if there is a presence of dull note it indicates pulmonary artery hypertension in this patient we found a resonant note which indicates there is no pulmonary artery hypertension now let's move on to auscultation we have to auscultate the patient in four areas mitral area in left fifth ics tricuspid area in left fifth parasternal region aortic area in second ics in right sternal border pulmonary area in second ics in left sternal border and also we have to look for radiation of murmurs in bilateral carotid regions